This is a little effects keychain toy and I thought can you turn this thing into a professional drum <laughs> computer? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Jay Watto, maker of Weird and Strange Instruments. The Executor Keychain is a cheap toy from the 80s and the 90s. You can play different annoying sound effects by pushing one of these mushy buttons. Very annoying. There are lots of people that circumvent these toys into weird musical noisy machines. Today I want to take this project one step further and turn this thing into a drum computer. So I can trigger these effects with my DAW or maybe a sequencer. Ooh. So I need to find out a way how I can trigger these buttons with my music gear. There are a few things I'm thinking of what I could do. But first let's open up this cheap toy to see what we are dealing with. I think when you are pressing one of these buttons, one of the pins of the chip behind this black blob is connected to the ground rail. If you follow the traces from this minus, so the ground rail, you can even see that. So if you connect something to the ground rail that we can control with a computer, like this Teensy microcontroller, we can control these buttons with the Teensy. The cool thing is that when I use this Teensy, I don't need to use one of these batteries anymore, because then I can just use the power coming from the Teensy. So let's connect these pads to the power of the Teensy and then let's try to use these digital outputs to trigger those buttons. So the ground rail is connected to the ground, positive to positive and then hopefully nothing starts burning. Let's test if this still works. Yes! I'm very glad nothing started to burn, so now let's solder one of these pads to the digital output onto the Teensy. This transistor will connect the wire from the keychain to ground when I put a high voltage on the middle pin of the transistor. And that middle pin is connected to the Arduino. So now I can control these button presses digitally. The only thing I have to do now is write some code for it. So the code is written and uploaded to the TNC. Now let's connect this pin and test if everything works. Change the speed. 100 to 50. The blow. Okay, so it should be faster now. Nice. So that works. So now let's connect all those eight buttons to the Teensy and then maybe even change the pitch of the keychain. I think I can do that. Everything is connected, now let's make another test code to test all of the buttons. I've just written some code where it will loop through the eight buttons. I didn't test it yet, so let's do that live. Let's upload this code. <laughs> it's already cool beat. <laughs> now very fast. Faster. Before I start messing around controlling the pitch of this toy, I will write some code so I can control this thing with USB MIDI. In other words, so I can control it with my DAW Ableton. I already sort of did this in another project where I made a video synthesizer of an old Super Nintendo. That's a really cool video, I put a link down in the description. Yeah, so let's do some coding again. 
I'm done coding, I can now control this instrument with Ableton. It's so cool! It's a new day! Yesterday I forgot to talk about that you can trigger every button by just drawing a MIDI note in your DAW. Let me show you. So these are some notes I draw and when I change those notes, the sounds will change. If the note is longer, it is as if you're pressing the button longer. Now let's finally change the pitch of these samples. In a lot of these old toys, there is one resistor that is connected to the clock of the chip playing the samples. So if you change that resistor or the variable resistor, you can change the speed of the clock. And if that clock speed is changed, the samples will play slower or faster. And then the sound will also be lower or higher. There are just two resistors on here. So my guess should be it's this right one. So let's test that. When you touch a resistor, the resistance will change. So if you do that with that resistor that is connected to the clock, the pitch will change. So let's find that resistor. So this one doesn't change. Let's try the other one. So this is the resistor that is connected to the clock. The resistance is about 150k. I have one of these 1 million linear potential meters laying around. So let's change this with this resistor. <laughs> Super cool. Let's add a decent jack output so we don't have to hear everything through this small speaker over here. So I've added the jack input and when you put a jack into the jack socket, the speaker will turn off. Cool. could have just chosen cheaper Arduino instead of a Teensy. There was one big reason why I chose a Teensy, and that is because it has an analog output. I think I can change the clock speed of this cheap toy with an analog output of the Teensy. So instead of using a variable resistor that restricts the voltage, I will write my own voltages coming from the Teensy. A few days later and a lot of testing, I started to think my idea isn't going to work. But I found this alternative idea where you can just use an LDR and a LED. An LDR is a resistor that changes resistance depending on how much light it captures. Light dependent resistor. It's even in the name. So if you combine an LDR and a LED, you have something to change the resistance of that LDR depending on how much power you send to that LED. There isn't almost something easier than making a LED blink with a microcontroller. With a little bit of code I can control that LED with MIDI. And tada! I've made a drum computer where I can change the pitch of these samples with my computer or a sequencer. Cool! I spend a little bit more time on this project than normal so I will be making a part too. So can I turn this thing into a professional drum computer? Leave a comment if you think I can't or can. For part 2 I will solder all of the electronics onto a prototyping board and design and 3D print a nice sexy case for this instrument. See you next time.